Adolf Hitler was obsessed with keeping his private life private. Few were ever allowed into his inner sanctum. But one confidant was his mistress, Eva Braun. And she captured some of her time with Hitler on film. Then, in the aftermath of World War II, some of her home movies were lost. More than 20 years later, two young filmmakers set out to find them, and did. By the late 1930s, Eva Braun was fascinated by two things, Adolf Hitler and Hollywood. For her to get the best of both worlds, the Fuhrer promised that once he ruled Europe, he would send her to Tinseltown where she would become an actress. The starring role she dreamed of was herself, of course, in a biography telling the glamorous story of Adolf and Eva's own rise to power. But her on-camera debut had to wait during the off-camera years she played the role of Hitler's mistress. Eva was, was never photographed and never presented to the German populace. She was hidden away. He was this, this uh, dictator, this, this man who's uh, seriously attempting to take over the whole world. And he's got this uh, secret girlfriend who is basically this flighty, giggly girl dressing up in dirndls, uh, playing with rabbits, and, uh, and doing calisthenics. And having fun tinkering with cameras. Eva always seemed to have a camera around her. She was familiar with uh, photograph technology. She had worked as a photo assistant for Heinrich Hoffmann, the official photographer for Adolf Hitler. In fact, that's where Hitler first met Eva, was in uh, Hoffmann's studio. Hitler, too, enjoyed the magic of movie making. Before World War II, Hitler and Eva often passed summer evenings at Hitler's Berghof retreat, watching private screenings of films. One of their favorites was Gone with the Wind. Still, even in the security of his fortress, Hitler was never quite at ease on camera. Hitler didn't really uh, act as if he was in a home movie. He was, although it was just his mistress shooting him by himself, he was acting as if he was in front of 200,000 people. He was very, very uh, wound up. He's, he's, not, he's, not, he's not someone who ever relaxed. Beginning in the late 1930s, Eva filmed Hitler with a Siemens 16mm camera as he kissed ladies' hands and chatted over drinks. Even more jarring for some viewers is that Braun captured a genial Hitler smiling at children and petting his dog Blondie. Much has been made of the fact that Blondie cringes away from Hitler's touch. But as the end of the war drew near, Eva abandoned her film work. Finally, in April 1945, Eva and Adolf married, and then jointly committed suicide the following day. In May, an American team of counterintelligence officers seized Hitler's chalet. It is uncertain whether U.S. forces discovered Eva's home movies at the chalet or seized them from a local Nazi SS officer. Either way, Americans took control of at least eight reels of Eva Braun's home movies. The, the films that Eva shot were something very personal to her. And it's evident by the way that she chose to edit certain segments of the films to show her vacation. And she would hand draw a title to introduce that segment of film and make little drawings and, and hand write on them where she had been and the dates that she had been there. All the reels were taken to the War Department in Washington, D.C. Government documents show that at least two reels were then transferred to the National Archives as early as April 1947. The others were forgotten by the public for almost 25 years. During that quarter of a century, dozens of books, movies and television shows were made about Hitler's rise to power and his mistress, Eva Braun. Then in 1970, Young filmmakers Philippe Mora and Lutz Becker wanted to portray the private life of Hitler. So they began researching photographs of Hitler and his entourage. I came across a photo of Eva Braun with a 16mm camera filming Hitler at Obersalzburg, Berchtesgaden, where the, which was uh, Hitler's private home. And I asked my researcher, Lutz Becker, I just said, look at this photo of Eva Braun, I wonder where this film is in her camera. About the same time, 
Philippe's partner, Lutz, got a tantalizing tip from an ex-Marine at a dinner party for World War II veterans. One of the veterans there told Lutz that uh, he had been with the uh, Marine and Signal Corps when they entered Hitler's house and that film cans had been captured. Mora was enthusiastic. Could Ava Brown's home movie still exist? An archivist at the National Archives explained that if the reels survived, they would be inside the Pentagon, catalogued by date of capture. Finding the film seemed daunting, but the challenge was irresistible. At that time, there had been no color film of Hitler um, that was known, uh, and there was uh, little, if nothing, of Hitler's private life that was public. Mora and Becker provided the Pentagon with a few dates on which they thought Americans may have captured the films. Then, they waited. Two months later in London, we got a call, and um, the officers said that they had located eight cans of 16mm Agfa color film captured in Eva Braun's bedroom at Ober Salzburg. So we, we just couldn't believe it. I mean, it was just truly unbelievable. More than four hours of personal moments, many with the Führer, captured on a rare color film. When you see something in black and white, it kind of stylizes it, puts it at, at a remove. But to see someone like Hitler in colors, it, it actually uh, is frightening to you see the reality of the man. You realize there was this human being called Adolf Hitler who was a real person who did all this. It's not some movie, not some distant newsreel. Mora used some of the footage in his film Swastika, which was entered by Great Britain in the 1973 Cannes Film Festival. Some film critics praised it as an historical gem. Other people were appalled and offended at seeing Hitler so humanized. The Germans uh, were, in their newsreels, were shown shots of Hitler with children and dogs and animals. Our propaganda just uh, showed the reverse. People had been seeing our propaganda films on Hitler and hadn't seen the hadn't seen what the Germans had seen and you have to see what the Germans had, have seen to understand why they followed him today parts of Eva Braun's films appear in many books and documentaries a permanent reminder that Adolf Hitler had a secret mistress who loved to shoot home movies Eva Braun's home movies are kept in the U.S. National Archives in College Park, Maryland, next to the Zabruder home movie of President Kennedy's death and film of the first man on the moon, 